Hi there, I'm Buddha, and you're watching Dr. Guitar, a show for all you guitarists out there. In today's episode, I'm here to continue the series of episodes on tips to play better, how to play better. And this week's tip is very simple, is how to get a better tone without spending a nickel, without spending a dime, without spending a euro. Well, it's very simple. Learn how to master your guitar with your amp or with your amps or your guitars with your amps, but learn how to play it through an amp, guitar, cable, amp, the simple setup, which is very, very, very difficult to do, but very, very, very entertainment and very funny. It's, it's a lot of fun. So there's a lot of things you can do and we'll be talking about it, about it uh, in this in this show in this episode, which is using the volume to clean up the amp and to get sweet spots on, on the volume pot, using different pickup combinations to get uh, different tones and different functions, playing in different places of of the of the string length, so playing closer to the bridge, playing closer to the neck, playing with your fingers. Playing hybrid picking, playing with the pick and with the fingers. We are always looking for tone in strings, pickups, pots, guitars, amps, etc. But you already have the best gear you can have, which is you and your ears. So if you have your guitar, your amp, let's set it for example, a clean tone. Let's make it a little dirty. Okay, I have my tone set. Then I have all the knobs in my guitar to change my, my, my tone, but I have the places where I want to play. So if I play it, for example, close to the bridge. Turn a little less gain so I can have better dynamics. you can hear a huge difference in tone. So, it doesn't matter j just to play uh, different pedals, different things, you have to play it differently. And the way you hit your guitar, the, w the harder you play, the spankier it gets, the softer you play, the softer it gets. So, if I play, for example, in the neck pickup, the same thing, close to the bridge. <laughs> I'm not changing anything except the way I play it. Harder, closer to the bridge. Softer, closer to, to the neck. Somewhere in between. Same place, but harder. So the way you approach your guitar, the way you play with it, 
has a lot to do with your tone. Not the pickups, not the guitar, not the amp. It's what, what you put in. And this is the whole, the old discussion about is uh, gear doesn't matter, tone is in your fingers or is in your heart or in your mind or in your soul or in your, in your inspiration. It's not just like that. Uh, gear really does matter because the best, the, the better gear you have, the more it translates what you put into it. So I think a great guitar should, should show you what should should let let people hear what you put into it if you have a crappy guitar it doesn't react to your dynamics to your kind of playing so it is a little stranger but if you have a great guitar with a great amp with a great speaker it all translates whatever you, you change it, it changes with you and i'm not not talking I'm not even talking about settings. I'm just fixing it up. So if I play it, for example, same same phrase, close to the bridge. Harder. Gentle. Now gentle, close to the neck. with my fingers. You have a lot of tone going on here. And if you play a blues lick like... or... It changes, it changes a lot, a lot, a lot. And another th thing I like to do with a little more drive, a little less bass and mid-range. This is a fat amp, so I want to... With this kind of tone, I, I usually set my guitar to have a more a quieter tone with the neck pickup because the neck pickup has a lot more bass than the bridge. So it is already a lot more heavy on bottom frequencies and it distorts more of the, the amp. So I, I lower the neck pickup and I raise a little bit the bridge pickup. So my pickups are, if the guitar is here, they are kind of get going down. Because as they are closer to the bridge, they are brighter and less uh, bassy. So I need a little more bassy, making it close to the, to the strings. And I have it set so where I can have a rhythm tone in here or, or a gentler, softer, overdriven solo tone. And when I go to the bridge, it acts like a boost. So... So you can already listen and, and get that um, when I move into the neck pickup, it, it sounds a little uh, cleaner. It's kind of a, it's not cleaner, but it sounds less aggressive. And that's how I set the pickups. And again, not buying gear, just setting up the guitar for that kind of playing. Then I have the in-between tones and this works with every guitar that has m more than one pickup whenever you use more than one pickup together uh, they cancel the mid-range a little bit of the mid-range so they have less pick they have less smack and they have a little more bass and a little more treble on that so I usually when I want a softer tone I play with uh, either neck and middle or bridge and middle but it, it is immediately softer mm. 
And this is a lot more obvious when you are in a band context. So if, if I want to be blended in, for example, I have a Buddha Paul Blues song which is called Love and Hate. And um, it is, let me turn a little bit off the, the gain. So it is a funkier groove, but I want it to be very mellowy. I use with a vibe, so I'm not here with the vibe pedal, but it's. <laughs> What did I do? When I, when I go to the chorus, I turn on the neck, and the neck is a little heavier, so let's, it's like... If I play it with neck and middle... Neck. So it is throatier, it, is, it has more mid-range. And playing here by myself is not that huge of a difference in volume, because it's almost the same volume. But when you're in the band, that extra mid-range allows you to cut in the mix, cut through the mix. So that's the reason why people use Tube Screamers, to get that honky mid-range, that pointy mid-range that sticks you out in the mix. So I like to use it a lot with the um, in-between section of it. When I play funkier stuff, heavy rhythm, it makes me sound a little more compressed, so... With a cleaner tone. If I played with a neck... Neck and mill. So you can instantly hear a different uh, change in, in perceived volume. And I'm changing the tone with no extra gear, just using what I have in my guitar, cable, amp. Uh, and you, can, you might say, you're always adjusting gain so you can have less distortion. Okay, I'm adjusting it to just to um, letting you know um, in, in what situation. If I'm playing funk, I would never have the amp that cranked. But I can have the amp always cranked and then back off the volume, which is another tip. So if you have a, an, a very overdriven amp, let me change to the second channel. this kind of tone, I can have my clean tone with volume on three.
And I went to see Robert Cray in a festival. We played together, not, not together, but in the same festival. And I went to see him. And Robert Cray is always playing his rhythm tones in the neck and middle. And he's playing his solos and the bridge and, and middle. Why? Because you have a lot more bite from the bridge pickup. So the same riff in the neck and middle, and then middle and bridge. So neck and middle. Bridge and middle. And this bridge and middle is the Mark Knopfler tone. This is the Mark Knopfler tone. And once you get your, your guitar tone figured it out, you have a lot of different tones too. So w even with the volume, depending on what you have in the volume, I, ha I always use treble bleed so I can back off the volume and have that, that effect that you have on a fuzz face. So you back off the volume and you gain a little brightness. So full on neck pickup. <laughs> On four. But I know this guitar's volume on nine takes off a little bit of the brightness, so if this, the tone is too bright, I can always use it on nine. So here is full on. On ten. And again. The harder you, you play it, so if I have a little less drive. And I know this sounds like super normal, super of course, you can change your, your knobs and pick up selections on your guitar, yeah, of course, but it is not that normal. I, I, it took me a long, a long, long, long time to figure out 
where I like the knobs. I usually used it all on 10. I didn't even knew why the tone knobs are for. And I usually don't use tone knobs unless I'm in a jam session and I have this guitar and I want to play a jazz or a bossa nova song. I cut off the tone and I play it. Then another great mod you can do in your guitar is to have a pickup turned out of phase or at least an option. In this guitar, if you have been watching the videos, you know I have this push-pull which allows me to turn the bridge off phase. And then the tone knob on the bridge, if I push it, it's a blender between the bridge and the, and the neck. So if I have this out of tune, it gives me this quacky tone. But the great thing about having a blender in here is that I can blend how much of the other pickup is 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 in. So if I'm in the neck position and I have I have this switch on 10, nothing happens. I'm only hearing the neck pickup. Then if I can blend in a little bit of the bridge pickup, which is out of phase in this case. So And this also doesn't cost you a thing because you you can or well it can cost you like five bucks or something, but it is just changing the wiring on the guitar, and it, this is a very special fancy thing. You, can, you the the important thing about this is learn your guitar and master your guitar tone with your guitar and your amp. Try to figure out what how can you change your tone by playing it differently. For example, I have a jam session every Wednesday here in Braga, in my, my hometown in Portugal, and I force myself to, to take to the jam session, to take a different guitar, a different amp, to learn how to play that amp. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I, I get better at it, and I get better at, at playing it. I, I've done an episode on how to set an amp, and how to set an amp for pedals and how to set an amp for playing with guitar and amp. And that it took me a long, a long time. I, I've been doing the jam session for six years now. Uh, and it took me a long time to figure it out and to have fun with playing that limited. But it is great to play with your fingers, to, to lower the volume, to set the amp at the maximum distortion or overdrive you want, and then to back it up back it off with the volume knob, using the out of phase, using the different pickup configuration, depending on which guitar I, I play, uh, I, I approach it differently. It's, it's, it's very fun and you find your own voice by doing it. So this is why I decided to do this episode because it's very important for you to find your own voice, your own musical voice while playing your instrument and not being always chasing the next overdrive pedal which is the great overdrive pedal so there's a funny story about the tube screamer uh, when i started playing guitar and chasing tube screamers everyone t said that stevie ray vaughan tube screamer was the 808 the real old stock one and that's great and then later they found found out that uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan was using the cheap, shitty tube screamer, the TS-10, and immediately it, it went to the roof with prices. When it was a cheaty, 
uh, a shitty, uh, crappy tube screamer. So people are always thinking that to get Stevie Ray Vaughan's tone, they need to get that tube screamer. No, they need to know how to play the guitar and to figure out his licks. I think you should try to figure out your own voice, your own self playing an instrument. You have idols and inspirations, but try to figure it out. What can you bring new to, to, to this world? I think that's the great trip of being a musician, finding, finding your own voice, your own self in, in, your, in your music. Well, that's it. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see each other next week. Bye-bye.